Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the Shop. We're cleaning out the stove, we got our bucket and our shovel. I think that was called a coal shovel. I'll show you how we do this. Keep it banked up in the back, we'll dig a little trench there, and then we'll clean it out in the front. But it kind of flows going up. Up that way, then up over to the top of to the pipe. So We always leave some in the back. That way the fire goes to the front. And if you're close to a wall, it kind of helps keep the, the wall from getting too hot. But there you go. We got some wall in here. We're going to make some kindling wood. Got some fat wood we use. Paper. We have shredded paper from our paper shredder machine in the house. So we'll get this thing going and we'll think of something to do. We'll think of some little project to show you. Because it's 45 degrees out if it's sat in there. It's cold, wet, and muddy. And I'm not going to do any kind of tire work or out in a muddy yard. So. We plan on doing them by hand. We're trying to save money. We're on a budget. So that'll be a nice sunny day for that. But just can't see in there in the dark. Let me out of here. That's kind of spooky. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll be back with something. Okay, we'll start out with a little alcohol stove I made. We started with one of these air fresheners we found at a dollar store. Just good stuff for your car or in the house. Coconut. Pretty yummy stuff there. Okay. Here's one made out of a Venom energy drink can. I can just fit my Coleman coffee cup on there. I can balance it on here, okay? This has eight holes in it, and this is kind of some chicken scratching. I really don't want to make a video how to make one, but I'll give you a few clues. I did this all in metric because it worked better, so I used the metric system. See where the bottom dish is in? Okay, you have to allow where that comes up, okay? So when you cut this, you have to make sure that where this is going to be upside down, when it hits that, how much you're going to need for length on this. Make this a few millimeters or an eighth of an inch or whatever longer, because you can always lap it on a piece of sandpaper to smooth it out. And that's how you get that where both edges are together. I kind of screwed up and made my inside too short and had to grind the outside down. So don't do what I did. Make this part a little longer. Okay. If you look down in here, see that little groove? Take a Dremel diamond bit. See that little groove? And you want to groove down in that slot. Here, we'll show you what it looks like when it's not in it. When you rip this off, there's going to be a lip under here. A little bit smaller than this. Okay? When you rip the top of this off here. So see that little groove? That's to let the alcohol get up in here. What happens when you light this, it starts boiling the alcohol, then the fumes come out the jets. I have eight jets. I took a piece of paper and went around the circumference, okay, my black lines are starting on, divided it into eight, you could make it 16, I just wanted this one, eight. Then you just shove it down in there, and make sure that you figure out where this starts dishing, that's the tricky part. You want about a sixteenth inch of a clearance behind this hole to this, so the fumes can come up. Now I had a bit here where I could show you where I poked it in the hole. So if you poked it in a hole about 16 of an inch, you would hit this inner wall. That is the trick to these alcohol stoves. Make sure there's enough room. You almost have to hold them side by side and look at it. What I did is I cut the top off longer, cut the bottom off the height I wanted, and I kind of held it up there and looked at it and studied. I got lucky because it's going to touch here. You get about this far, well, almost where you see that shadow. You get about this far down, it's going to start pulling away. Watch my pencil. See how it kind of pulls away? I don't know if you can see it on camera. I think you get the idea on that. That's all you do. We'll light it some other day. We don't want to light it right today. So There you go. There's a the project. Still will work better than sandpaper. There's a plastic label on the bottle. It still was a nasty looking. If you sanded it, it kept kind of getting powdery. So I used still wool and buffed it. So it would give kind of a shine. But... There you go. Enough on that. Let's find something else to show you that we worked on or we're going to do. Okay, we'll take out the tripod for this one. This was in my firewood. A piece of railroad tie. Okay. What we're going to do is split it down for kindling. See where the spikes go through. Then we are going to maybe throw these in the wood stove to burn them to get the rust off. And then we'll, we'll do something with them. But just something of interest there. Uh, on to something else. 
Okay, we've promised this several times probably over the years. We're going to show you our hot glue technique. Now this is the stuff for wood. Now when this, when you cut this with a side cutters, it, it's like plastic. It can actually break off and shatter. It's not like a regular glue stick, okay? So you can use any kind of glue sticks you want, but here we'll get our little pieces here, okay? And say we're going to put some glue on here, about in there. Hope we're not too far away. This is how we do this. We got our, this made just out of a welding rod. It's just ground down to a point, like a big needle and all. We're getting here, we're gonna heat it up. Hope we're not too far away. I always think I'm too far away. I'm sure people have big screens now, but I got used to a little 15 inch laptop that I wanted to make my videos up close in case somebody just had a tablet or a phone. Okay. You don't have to have it red hot. Some glue sticks you can just poke it in there. This one's this thing's kind of dull, and like I said, this stuff is hard. But it's nice if you can stab it about in the middle. So see how we got a nice hunk on there. Okay, we're just gonna lay this down because this might get sloppy because we're on video. So we're gonna lay it down so we grab it like that. All you do is just get it over the candle. Kids, don't do this time without mom and dad watching you. Don't start your house on fire because you see me doing this on YouTube. See how it's coming into a glob? Yeah, I dropped that on my hand. Well, we dropped it in the fire. Don't worry, it's just a little wax. Okay, we got a nice glob. Let's get it on here. Let's smear it around. Let me get it a little closer. Let's, let's, let's smear it around. Say it's not on there as smooth as we want. Just take and heat your thing back up. And it's good to burn this off once in a while, like with the wax. The wax not going to bother me. Uh, this is used to seal waterproof hold stuff. Even if I was gluing two pieces together, you can have a napkin, a paper towel to wipe it off. Don't wipe it off. Do like I did. Not have it folded enough times to burn your fingers. So to put all these disclaimers. Okay. Let's say that's hot enough. Go back with your rod. And just kind of, you know, smooth it, smooth it, smooth it. New words, smooth it. Kind of smooth it around like that. Okay, we'll do one more. Be careful your rod too. You're up here. This thing can get hot after a while. I don't like using anything with a handle. I like this. I like this little tool in my hand. I have two of them. It's just regular welding rod. You beat the flux off it. Let's try to stab this right about in the middle. See, see how we're cutting in the middle? So you kind of form a little ball. So don't get in there like I didn't get in a hurry. It's, if you think it's gonna fall off, just pull away, go over against your object. See, I knew it was gonna fall. And uh, start smushing it around, smush and smooth. I ain't gonna say anything there. Sometimes things come to my mind I don't want to say them on YouTube. Smushing and smoozing. It's probably something some old guys say. I know a few old guys watch me on YouTube will probably be thinking of that. They were smoozing and smooching. That's all you do. Get your rod in there and heat it up. Go across there. And like I said, down inside of here, when I showed the video of me fixing a socket, I think it was last week or sometime, you, know, you can get right down in there and get your drop in there. You know, you can go down there with it just right. And that's it. That's the technique. Uh, this candle was saved from a cinnamon roll flavored, I keep saying flavored, scented candle that came in that little cast iron skillet. So I chopped it all up to make the mop string starters, and I saved just the center. Now I had three different candles in one. I cut down a tin can. I used my big old heavy duty scissors. Let's just get a piece here and see what happens here. How do we get it? Let's try to keep it on the thing. So it'll roll around on you. We're gonna lose it. Nope. We lost it. That's why I use a junky candle. Don't use a nice candle from the house. I just don't like them little jar. I want to be able to get to it. 
See, you still got a little ball there. So it's, see, see, you want to just just get something started. So it's hard for me to tell on the screen whether it's just get you a little ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. There you go. That's enough of that. And what I like is if you want it black, the more you get, the more you hold it right in the flame, the more sooty it'll get. Let's just put it on here and you'll see how black, see how nice and black that is. So you might be working on some black plastic or something. You want it black. But there you go. That's enough of that. Uh, we don't know if we're going to bring back, we'll bring back at least something so we can say goodbye here for the day, but uh, we'll think of something else small and we'll keep this video short. Okay, one more thing before we go. This used to be under the dash of my truck, hooked to the end dash that was in there. I doubt it's 100 watts, but it's equalizer amp, and it works so good. I got it at like a convention center in the city. Uh, they have like this big flea market. I mean, companies come in and sell junk. I used to have a set of speakers in a box, you know, your big 8 inch, whatever. It goes behind your seat in your gray carpeted box. Now, I did keep track of what's in and what's out and what's front and what's rear, but I did not keep ever keep track of what's left balance and right balance, which it probably wouldn't matter too bad. I mean, you're going to end up with the thing to do would probably be hook it up and listen to a song that you know. And if you think the balance is off, try switching the input. That'll work. Just try. Well, try switching your speakers first. And if that don't work, uh, try switching it, going into it, or either way. You know what I mean. Switch them around. Uh, these are the type of speakers that have to be grounded to a ground wire, not to the case. But this is a nice unit when I got it. I probably only gave ten dollars for this, probably back in the early two thousands. So. We'll leave you with that in case you've ever seen one, in case you've never seen one. You might be young enough, you've never seen a little booster equalizer, but it was a nice little unit. And it's day, so thanks for watching. I'll snap a close-up picture of this. And hope everybody has a good week coming up.